And today, casinos in Illinois reopened this morning, and our Justin Andrews is live explaining. Yeah, so kind of an asterisk. Yes, sort of. In other news this morning, the man accused of killing officer Tamaris Bohannon will have a detention hearing today. Is that oh, right? Yeah. I don't know. Just embrace it. I need mean, like, <laughs> yeah. overnight, a seven-year-old girl is one of six shooting victims in the city of St. Louis over the last 12 hours. And I'm Marissa Holloway, joined by the most likable guy in St. Louis right now. Right now. I was talking about Mo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh. Kent, this weather is awesome. <laughs> oh, Ken, I was teasing. Oh, it was Ken. all in jest. I know, what goes around comes around. I gotta get I know, you I'll be waiting for mine. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Well, families are doing all they can right now to stay connected during this time of social distancing. And Al, if you'll tell us a little bit about what the judge specifically said about not getting the burden of proof. We know police are now working 12 hour shifts. The National Guard uh, has been put on standby today, so we've been following all of those developments as well. One thing that was brought up was um, just how long it was taking to actually reach a verdict in this, and we looked into a couple other cases um, talking about just that, that length of time. Well, it was a pleasure having yeah. you here, and now I could say I shared an anchor desk with Jane Pauley. And me with you. So cool. Oh, thank you so Very much. Good. Now to the latest on a story we brought you as breaking news last night at 10. What if I told you we were going to fix your air conditioning for you? Don't play. For real. What if I told you I love you? <laughs> we're going to surprise some people by paying for their groceries. Come on, let's go. Now I am so excited because I am joined by, I had to write all these words down, the Director of Human Exploration Development Operations at NASA, Bobby Watkins. Bobby, so good to have you here this morning. Thank you. You're all over it, man. Why isn't your is, mouth moving, Ken? I think the thing is you get what you're saying. <laughs> oh, no. And another person who is, Alarm clock is just as confused as ours, <laughs> Marissa Holloway. She's got to look at this morning's headlines. Hey, Very Marissa. true. And yeah. Kent, quit bragging about sleeping I until 5.30. <laughs> hey, good afternoon, Claire. It's a little noisy in here because, hey, we're at a construction site. Coronavirus continues spreading. Parents are expected to protest yet again today. Is that right. some blush on your face you like or that? Cheetos? It's a messy dish to make, I will admit. <laughs> Shake. I can't even count how many times I've waited for my wife at a store. This well, is, you know what? If good. they're going to put these in place, then they better start putting like a wine bar at Home Depot or something. <laughs> oh, Help here we out. go. Big news about a Netflix documentary that got a lot of our attention, certainly at the beginning of the pandemic, Tiger King. Remember that? When a new parent first brings home their baby from the hospital, emotions are plentiful. Maybe a little happy, nervous, even a little unsure. Understandable for all those emotions. One national organization is helping guide new parents, and it started here in St. Louis. News 4's Marissa Hollywood tells us how parents as teachers is making St. Louis proud. Oh Lord, I'm a mommy. <laughs> when you buy a car, you get this owner's manual. When you have a baby, it's, you know, uh, you, you go through the delivery process and you get this little person and they say, best wishes. Bye. Um, so wait a minute, what about the, what, so what, what about eating? Like, I can't call her doctor 24-7. <laughs> Shanae Page felt how most moms do, a little uncertain and a lot overwhelmed, bringing her daughter Cassidy home. But a program called Parents as Teachers was there to hold her hand from the beginning until now. Cassidy is 16 months old. <laughs> We're here to say, you got this, mama. As a new mom myself, I can relate to Shanae. So to figure out how the program works, I got my five-month-old son involved. We come into the, the family's home and we bring age-appropriate toys. You're holding it with both hands. And we look at their development, we look at their motor area. Are you pushing off on my hands? Cognitive skills. Did you see the baby? Did you see a baby in that book? Was that so much fun? Social emotional area. It's accessible to any family in Missouri through your local school district. Okay. And there are some programs in Illinois, too. Just a very relaxed visit, and it usually lasts about 50 minutes, up to an hour. And it's free. The program is available to families from before babies even born until, in some cases, age five. The idea behind it is because 80% of a child's brain development happens before age three. <laughs> Parents are their child's first and most influential teacher. Parents as Teachers was the vision of Mildred Winter. She worked in the Ferguson Florissant School District in the 80s. 
she saw children coming to school uh, underprepared and not ready to learn, and she thought that the answer was parents. With neuroscientists, she created a curriculum. Former U.S. Senator from Missouri, Kit Bond, enrolled his son in the pilot stage of the program. In 1984, while serving as Missouri governor, he passed the Early Childhood Education Act to establish parents as teachers statewide. And its results are proven. Reducing child abuse and neglect, improving school readiness, improving school attendance, uh, reducing out-of-school suspensions are uh, outcomes that our model can tout. It's being replicated in all 50 states. My biggest takeaways from our parents as teachers visit. Look at how much time he's been on the floor. It's nice to know that the basic things we need are, are accessible to everybody. You know, a floor. That was what she was saying was the best development tool. They even showed me how to make some homemade toys and stress the impact of simple things. Hello. Oh, look at that smile. Like looking your child in the eye while talking. Say blue. As simple as me calling out the colors. There's purple. And for Shanae, it makes you more comfortable and okay with being a parent. It really does. Even even teaching, pay, oh, patience. In St. Louis, <laughs> Marissa Holloway, News 4. A lot of cute going on yeah. in that St. Louis proud, isn't there? Wow. Yeah. Spam the cityscape, and you can't miss this glowing beacon. The St. Louis Science Center has been lighting up the area near Forest Park since 1985. Beyond delighting locals and tourists, it served as the backdrop of KMOV's eclipse coverage. And News 4 meteorologists have even taught a class or two there. Moving air. But if you haven't been to the Science Center in a while, there are some new features for the whole family. It is all about the past, present, and future of gaming. Enter game exploration, cylindrical ping pong, oh. vertical chess, virtual reality, augmented reality, all of the games that you knew from your childhood, Miss Pac-Man, Sega. I've never played Super Mario Brothers like this. There you go. Oh yeah. The real game is hard. It's even harder when you're playing with your feet. Or basketball wearing distorted <laughs> goggles. This is really tough. This has been a huge hit. At the end of the day at 4.30, every day, the security guards have to get people out of here. If you prefer the sun over the screen, check out Grow. Get more familiar with the journey of your food, essentially. So learn where it comes from, get touch with the plants. And that I did. It's just really sweet. You can also play farmer. Am I allowed to press anything? Feed the chickens and see what all the buzz is about. We have a camera so you can see inside a bumblebee hive and learn the story of pollination. From all natural to natural disaster, step into the volcanic disaster that was Pompeii. You can see over 150 beautifully well-preserved actual artifacts from the city of Pompeii, all 100% authentic and just gorgeous, on loan to us from the Naples Museum of Archaeology. And feel. We have a 4D eruption theater where you experience what that day was like when Mount Vesuvius erupted. It may be disturbing, but historically significant. You can see body casts made of actual victims of the volcano. It really brings to light the humanity and the, the disaster that this was. So the next time you want to learn a little and live it up, visit this little gift to the city. From the St. Louis Science Center, Marissa Holloway, News 4. Parents of teenagers. Get up, Ness. Get up. Get up. Get up. You know get this up. struggle. We're going to wake up Amber. The drunk. And the lengths you have to go <laughs> to get them out of bed. I just don't. I don't want to get up. Isabel Burke. Oh. Is a senior at Webster Groves High School. I see kids coming to school with like blankets and their hoods up, just wanting to go to sleep. I can't believe there's kids walking around with blankets. I mean, that is weird. Isn't that weird? Weird? Maybe. Problematic? Absolutely. About 10 to 20 percent of teenagers are actually getting uh, appropriate sleep. That means in every classroom, only two or three kids aren't exhausted. 
Teens should be getting eight to 10 hours every night. Like I see Snapchat stories of girls up at like even one. But it's not necessarily Snapchat, hormones, or a busy social life that's to blame. Medical experts say it's the time your teen has to be at school in the morning. So what time does the alarm first go off? Seven. When do you realistically get out of bed? 7.20 maybe. What we're trying to get communities to do is actually push that start time back about till 8.30. The American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Medical Association, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the American Academy of Sleep Medicine have done the research to back this up. So you might be wondering, why don't teens just go to bed earlier? When you hit puberty, there's actually a normal circadian delay, about two hours. Which means they don't even get sleepy until about 11 at night and kids are busier than ever. They have a lot of stuff to do. They sit through school for like eight hours and then they go home and do all their sports and all their homework and then they have to wake up early in the morning. We'll have parents who will say, I get up early. My kid's got to learn to get up early. When he gets a job, he's not going to be able to get up late for his job, right? We're just, we're just pampering children. Um, but you have to go back to the argument that they're physiologically different. Peter Steepleman is the superintendent of Columbia Public Schools in mid-Missouri. Our start times at high school are 9 o'clock. The district made the switch back in 2012. And we can say affirmatively that, you know, uh, our out-of-school suspensions went down. 1,400 suspensions in 2012, only 567 last year. There's issues of tardiness that goes down. There's issues of anxiety and depression that go down. Uh, there's issues of uh, drowsy driving. Uh, student achievement has uh, either maintained or, or gotten better. So students here, especially our high school students, outperform state, national, and international peers on AP tests, on ACT. The late start may seem like a no-brainer. We know that later start times are good for high school students, and yet we choose to ignore it sometimes. But why haven't we seen this in St. Louis and schools across the country? There are a few possible concerns. One attitude about rest. It's more of a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing in our society that sleep is not looked upon as as important as maybe dietary uh, concerns or um, staying fit. And logistics. It's hard for parents and teachers to accommodate the change in routine when they already have jam-packed schedules themselves. I don't know how nuts I am about that idea because of like the parent thing, but it kind of, but it does make sense. But what do the teens think? I like that. I think a lot of kids would like it. Marissa Holloway, News 4. I grew up in Illinois, went to the University of Missouri. I love St. Louis and what it has to offer. There are so many unique neighborhoods, cool restaurants, interesting parks. St. Louis is where it's at. It is awesome. <laughs> With Marissa, what you see is what you get. I mean, she is just very genuine on camera. She's just fun to be around, and she gives a, a great personality to the show. News 4 is always watching out for you, especially in the morning. We want to get you ready to start your day and start it right.